Hello and welcome to this quick update video on Dune Awakening. Dune Awakening, if you've not come across it before, is this new MMO being produced by Funcom. And MMO stands for Massive Multiplayer Online Game. And this, as you might imagine, is being based around Dune, the popular science fiction franchise. Uh, so I've talked about this in the past, but Funcom very kindly sent me an email yesterday. And in that email was like an update to the game, with links to these two articles. So I thought we might read through them, see what was going on. So both these articles are by the same person, a guy called Christopher Livingston, and they both appear in PC Gamer magazine. So I thought we'd just quickly run through them. One's a lot shorter than the other one. I think this is the longer one. This is Spice, Worms and Water. First details on survival systems in the upcoming June MMO. And essentially it says that, you know, a lot of survival games can be a bit grindy, and you're often forced to concentrate on survival above everything else. But in contrast to that, the article cites Valheim, which I've never played, and says that in Valheim, you know, it's not so gruelling. And then if you don't eat, you know, you might get weaker, but you're not going to drop dead as you would in Conan Exiles. So it seems that Dune Awakening isn't going to be as unforgiving as some games in that respect. And later on, it does go on to expand that a little. So anyway, these details come from a guy called Joel Bylos, who's the creative director for Dune Awakening, which is going to be set on a vast and seamless Arrakis that will be shared by thousands of players. So reading down a bit, Bylos says, the three main dangers are going to be sandstorms, hiding from those, the sandworms, and getting enough water to keep you alive. However, those aren't the only threats in the world of Dune. There are going to be hazards like quicksand and extreme temperatures. And apparently Funcom wants us to be prepared for, but not overly punished by these things. So Bylos says again, we want players to feel these tensions all the time. We want them to be continually thinking about, if I'm going across the open sand, I have to think about the sandworms. If there's a sandstorm coming, I have to know that there's shells nearby. And if I haven't built something, I need to know where I can hide and get away from the storms. So we're trying to create the tension, but we're also approaching it from the viewpoint of a little more accessibility. Something like Valheim, which I mentioned, where it's just not going to kill you instantly. So you have that little bit of leeway. And yeah, I quite like that approach. It's quite annoying when some mechanics just stop you dead. It's like I played Ark Survival Evolved for a little bit, and I found it really irritating that if you picked up too much to carry, you were basically stuck. <laughs> you couldn't move at all. And I sort of get it, because if you did pick up, you know, a massive amount of weight, you wouldn't be able to walk. But I much prefer the way they do it in Conan Exiles, where, you know, if you're over-encumbered, you can still creep around a little bit. So this system sounds quite user-friendly. It's going to be a challenge, but it's not going to throw too many serious obstacles in your path. So scrolling down, we come to another factor, and this is Spice. At the start of the game, players have no strong affiliation to Spice, but over time, it will begin to permeate their bloodstream, which will allow them to enhance their abilities and learn new skills. In some ways, Spice sounds like Valheim's food system, something important to the game, but not deadly if neglected. Again, never played Valheim, so I can't really comment. So Bylos goes on to say, so you want to stay above a certain Spice level to keep learning abilities. You might want to stay above a certain level just to make sure that you have 100% of your maximum health all the time. We're not trying to punish the player by killing them if you don't have the Spice for a while, but we're trying to give them a good reason to maintain their spice levels. So it seems that you can only develop your skill trees as such and keep high health if you've got quite a lot of spice in you. Going down a little bit more, we talk about sand crafts. Crafting is another big part of the survival genre and Bylos explained how crafting will vary from how it works in Conan Exiles. In Conan Exiles, you have a tech tree and as you level up your character, you spend points in the tech tree but in Dune Awakening, you're actually going to go out looking for specific schematics that you can use to craft specific items. And the example that they give here is that if you've got information about a botanical testing station somewhere in the desert, then you can go out there and find schematics lying about. So as Bylos explains, the crafting is a little bit more bespoke. It's a little less tech driven and a little more exploration driven. Yeah, so spice harvesting is going to play a major part in the player-driven economy, but crafting is also going to be a path to player success. He goes on, There's a pillar of the game we call infinite exploration, and the idea is that outside the shield wall, the sands actually shift during the Coriolis storms, 
and the entire map outside of that space changes. As the storm buries existing locations like testing stations or crashed spaceships, it will also reveal new ones. And if you're the first player to visit one of these new locations, you might be the first person to find a schematic no one else has found yet. And they end up by saying that there's no announced release date for Dune Awakening, but the second chapter of the new Dune film is due out later this year, and they wouldn't be surprised if the game release is time to coincide with the movie release. However, we're in the middle of the Hollywood writer's strike at the moment. Well, it's a writer's and actor's strike, so I don't think anyone's allowed to do promotion for movies, which means that the movie release is likely to be postponed for quite a while. So anyway, fingers crossed. Let's look at the next article. This one's quite interesting, written by the same guy in the same place, and it's Survival MMO Dune Awakening takes place in an alternate timeline. Players will see all the familiar things they'd expect, but as part of an alternate history, says creative director Joel Bylos. So it turns out the Dune Awakening is set in the year 10,199 AG. I have no idea what AG stands for. I perhaps should have looked that up before I started speaking. But this is eight years after the events of the Dune film, basically the main story of the first Dune book. But in the MMO, he goes on, these events won't play out in quite the same way that people familiar with the books or the films will remember them. So Bylos says, it's similar to the books, but we've gone with an alternate history, like a what if, if you want. We work closely with the Herbert family and legendary pictures, and we found a point, a single point, the single pebble that starts a landslide. And apparently this point is where if just one thing was different in the universe, then it would change a lot of what comes after, and change it in a way that makes for more of a virtual world kind of experience, where players can see all the familiar things that they'd expect to see. Now it seems that Bylos doesn't actually tell them what the pebble of the story was, or how changing this pebble results in an alternative timeline, but this change is meant to allow players in Dune Awakening to interact with characters from the books that they wouldn't otherwise be able to, because a lot of major characters die early on in the story. If you've seen the first movie, you can expect many of those characters to exist in the story of the game, Bylos said. I could give you an example that's very clear. Duke Leto is still alive. You can meet Duke Leto. And the article goes on to say that Duke Leto doesn't last very long. In fact, I think he dies halfway through the book, more or less, or closer to the beginning than the end. But in the game, Duke Leto and presumably other characters like Duncan Idaho will be around for you to interact with, which will be quite fun. So Bylos goes on, the idea is that players will be able to make choices about who they help or want to work with later on in the game. So if you're meeting Duke Leto, you've clearly done the right things for a certain group of people, obviously jumped through a lot of hoops. And that's the end of that article. That was quite short, wasn't it? Thinking about this pebble, this single pebble of story that changes, I was trying to think what that might be. And the only crucial story point I can think of that uh, would change things very drastically is Dr. Yui. If you're not familiar with the story, uh, then, you know, spoiler alert, but Dr. Yui betrays the Atreides family and allows the Harkonnens to invade Arrakis and take back the planet. And I think what might happen in the game is that Yui double-crosses Baron Harkonnen and warns Duke Leto about the attack. So when the Harkonnens attack Arrakis, they're actually beaten back rather than wiping out the Atreides family. And I'm guessing if that's true, then some sort of power sharing structure is developed that allows the Atreides and the Harkonnens to coexist on the planet at the same time. Because earlier on we discovered that there are various factions that the player can join. And one is the Imperial family, one is House Atreides, and one is House Harkonnen. And you can also join the Fremen, or the Spice Traders, I think. I think the Spice Traders might be a faction. I might have invented those. But there are certainly Spice Smugglers you can join. And that always puzzled me, because in the Dune story, the Atreides and the Harkonnen were never on Arrakis simultaneously. First it belonged to the Harkonnens, then the Atreides take over, then the Harkonnens invade and take it back. So anyway, that's my guess for the change in the story and the setting up of that alternative history. So that was it. I hope you found it interesting and useful. Hope to see you again for the next video, and until I do see you again, I shall say goodbye. Okay then, cheerio.